In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to export your animation as a movie file that can be viewed by other people. To do this, we're going to need to move from working on our animation down to the button panel at the bottom of the screen. In the button panel, we're going to want to switch to the scene view, F10. In the scene view, we have a number of different panels in here. Uh, the first we're going to deal with is where our files are being saved. Right here it's being saved to the temporary file which will get erased whenever Blender exits. So that's not a great place to actually permanently save our files. If we click the folder next to that, we can actually choose a other location. I'm going to choose my desktop and uh, uh, it's, it's now going to save these movie files to my desktop as it builds them. As we do this, the next panel over here, Render, has to do with settings for how each individual frame is rendered. We're not going to deal with that right now. Animation, we're going to come back to in a second. This is actually going to be the next step. But over here on Format, before we get any further, we need to change how this is being saved. Right now, these files are being saved as JPEGs, as one JPEG file per frame, which is neat if that's what you want. But if you want a movie, we need to change it to a movie format. I'm going to use QuickTime, and in QuickTime, we I'm going to use a set of settings that I like. They'll make it playable in uh, iTunes, Apple TV, I, you know, iPods, whatever makes you happy. H.264 is the codec we're going to use. I'm going to compress it a little bit just so we don't end up with redonkulously huge files. Anytime I want to go back in and change my codec, I can. I can click this set code, or if this is a bigger view, it's actually set codec button right there, and we can change the codec from H.264 to something else that we need for our specific purposes. As we're doing this, I can also change the size of my movie. 800 by 600 is pretty big. I want something that will render a little faster. Right now, I'm going to change this to 400 by 300, one quarter of the size. Having done this, we can actually now go back to the animation pane, click Anim and it will start to render our movie one frame at a time. And as it's doing this, it's building the movie file. I'm going to come back in a second when it's done doing this run. At this point, we can see that this is finished. It's reached frame 100, which is the end of my video. And in fact, it's no longer running. Um, I can actually close this window at this point. Should I want to just see it again in Blender, I can click the play button, and it would bring up my animation in its own window here which is off screen for you, but you'll just have to trust me that it's there and play it back for us. Meanwhile, if we go and look in our des in, in, in the desktop folder, we see that I've actually created a movie file, auto named 1 to 100, this is my first frame from my 100th frame. And if I open it up, it's now a lovely little QuickTime movie that I can share with anyone who happens to be able to, to play QuickTime movies, which is almost everybody in the world. And that is how you make a video file from Blender.